be ready 5 seconds sir the current set of amendments are not just for one of the institutes but for three institutes the chartered accountants institute the cost and works accountants institute and also the institute of company secretaries these amendments are being brought in as a consolidated set of amendments as one amendment bill let me start by addressing the concern which was voiced by one of the members that how come you are bringing all the three together are they going to be governed together by one act no sir there is no proposal at all to have a single legislation for all the three institutes there are three separate acts and they will be governed by their respective separate acts this is just a consolidated amendment bill why should it be in one bill it is because while there are three different acts largely their wordings and the spirit of the flow of the acts are comparable and therefore the amendments have been brought in to make sure that there is a greater comparability between the functioning of the three institutes but the amendments are being brought in as one integrated bill these amendments have not been brought in as it is without much work for quite some time different committees have gone into them the recent one being the minakhi dotto ghosh committee which had come up with several recommendations it was formed in april 2017 and it had given its recommendations in september 2017 many of the recommendations given by the minakhi dotto ghosh committee with minor tweaking have been brought in through this bill sir the reason why we are bringing it now and of course after quite a lot of consultation is in the last 8 years we have witnessed considerable change progress growth and also economic development with a lot of legislative support coming in to make it easy for companies both for entry and for exit we have passed the insolvency and bankruptcy code and this house is quite aware we have come here periodically to amend the ibc companies act also went through quite a few amendments the ibc the companies act and the llp act all of them represent the rapidly changing economic profile and we are also making sure that there is more space given for llps under which come the startups and so on so since the llps are also gaining a good space in the economy it was necessary for us to have a robust audit certification from the professionals it is also important that the audit certification and also the quality of audit will have to be kept in mind and improved so that there is a favorable investment climate in the country above all when all of us are looking towards greater transparency better board managed companies and so on the sanctity of an audited financial statement gains so much importance 
that we need all the stakeholders, whether they are promoters, whether they are investors, whether they are employees, to have greater confidence in the kind of statements which are certified by the professionals. Therefore, at this time, if there is a necessity for reviewing the SR, the self-regulatory kind of a mechanism with which most of these institutes function, we are only doing it because we will be globally aligning ourselves. Most of the countries, whether it is the US, the UK, Australia, Canada or South Africa, all of them have such systems. In fact, in the United States of America, every state has its own body, and not just one, there are many bodies within that, and the government of the state appoints many of these members who regulate these bodies and so on. So, the world has moved further and further away to have a greater transparent and accountable way and a process in which everybody sits in to judge and also to see how the functioning happens. Therefore, at this time for India, these three institutions are very important pillars of corporate governance, especially together with the board of the company and the management of the company, this would be the third most important pillar for greater professionally managed and efficiently managed companies. That is why we need to have these amendments brought in. They are brought in because the International Forum of Big Regulators is also now coming to say what are the guidance that globally we can give to each other, which are the best practices which can be adopted. Therefore, we have thought it fit that at this stage we come up with this consolidated amendment bill. I also understand that concerns have been expressed by some honorable members. If this is going to compromise the autonomy of these institutions, and in particular, if the coordination committee, which is coming in, will it change the way in which the independent functioning has been affected all these years? Will that get affected or will that get compromised? I want to state up front, sir, that there is no proposal here or no intention here to impinge upon the autonomy of these three institutions. There is not even a faint intent to dilute the autonomy of these three institutions. The three institutions at present are responsible for all the functions concerning the qualification, licensing and regulation of their conduct. They will continue to perform those functions. As regards the fee from the students, the institutes earlier also had the full powers. That is also not being touched. So, even that will continue. In fact, the council is being given full autonomy to decide the fee as regards registration of members and certificate of practice. At present, to increase the fee for registration of members and certificate of practice beyond a limit prescribed in the Act, the approval of the government is required. But this is being dispensed with. The Council will have full powers to fix even such fees. 
in fact that is being given and the government which had an indirect role in it wherein after a point the council had to come back that is also being given back to the council